Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. We are talking about meeting Jesus where we expect him to say to us, well done, faithful servant. I believe that that is our aim in life. That is our heartbeat and our heart cry. That he will, he will say unto us, faithful servant, you have done the duty of your master. Enter into my rest. I pray that that will be our story. Amen. Amen. And if we want that to be our story, then we are building on something else. Where today we are going to focus on Christ. So I'm going to deal with focusing on Jesus Christ. Holiness is taking us to another level where we are going to focus on Jesus Christ. We want to focus entirely on him. The Bible made us to understand that this is my joy. That you live and walk in the truth. This is my joy. If we want to be focused in the Lord. Then we must live and walk in the truth. That is in John. Third John. 3 and 4. Tell John 3 and 4. He said, This is my joy that ye live and walk in the truth. So the Lord wants us to live and walk in the truth as children of the living God. Because he said, There is no greater joy than to hear my children walk in the truth. Hallelujah. So the Lord requires of us to walk in the truth. In another sense, he also said that Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. In John chapter 14 and verse 6, if we want to focus on the Lord, then he wants us to understand that he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. He also wants us to understand that we must focus on Jesus as our center of everything that we do. We must focus on Jesus as the focal point, the center of everything that we do. And that can be found in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 10. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 10. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 10, he said we are focusing on Jesus as our center. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. Yes, please. And ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. So we are complete in Jesus, who is the head of all principality and power. We are complete in him. Our completeness is in Christ. Therefore, he wants us to focus on him. So ladies and gentlemen, holiness is taking us to another 
dimension where it will cause you to focus on him. You cannot focus on Christ when you are not holy. You can't focus on him when you are not thinking right. In other words, if you can focus on him, then he also wants you to understand that you must avoid deception and anything that is untruth. You must avoid deception and anything that is untrue. You must avoid it. Why? In John chapter 8 and verse 44, John chapter 8 and verse 44, we are speaking about focusing on Jesus Christ. Focus on Jesus Christ. John chapter 8 and verse 44. John 8, 44. Yes, please. Ye are of your father the devil, mm. and the last of your father ye will do. Mm. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. So I want us to understand that he is telling us, Jesus is telling us, that if we want to focus on him, and we want to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, then we must be truthful. We must avoid deception in any form. We must avoid deceiving God's people. And you must also avoid deceiving others. And in other words, anything that is untruth, avoid it. Because whenever you deceive people or you tell a lie, you are a child of the devil. Because the Bible said that is who he is. So therefore, if we are children of Christ, then we speak the truth. If we are children of the living God, then we abide in the truth. Is that correct? In other words, this also makes us to understand that if we are going to focus on Jesus, then we must avoid. Don't turn to feebles. Don't turn to feeble tales. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 4. We must avoid these things. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 4. Yes, please. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into feebles. They shall turn their ears from the truth and it shall be turned unto feebles. They will not hear the truth anymore. They see the truth, but they will never say the truth. People will always embrace that which is evil. They will embrace that which will grant unto them freedom. And they are ready to hear all kinds of deception. Jesus is saying that if we are going to focus on him, then we must turn away from these things. We must be focused on the Lord. Now this is by way of introducing focusing on Jesus. Because you can't introduce this by saying these particular things that Jesus wanted us to understand. Note, child of God, from all these deductions that we have postulated tonight through the word of God, I want us to note that the motto for every child of God, the motto for every child of God is to seek and defend the truth. If you can be focused on Jesus Christ, then you must seek and defend the truth. So if you are a child of God who cannot defend the truth, then you can focus on Jesus. And to that vein, I want you to understand tonight that you have missed the kingdom of God. Because if you can't focus on the truth, then you are none of his. Because Jesus said, in John 14, 6, where he said, 
I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. That is why I said every motto of a child of God must, number one, be seek and defend the truth. In other words, we need to make this the rule of our life as long as we live. And we must determine to seek after the truth of God every day of our life. Let's determine to seek the truth of God every day of our life. Because Jesus and the word of God and the Holy Spirit are sources of truth. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit... And the word of God, they are our source of truth. They are our source of truth. You cannot focus on Jesus Christ if you don't believe in the word of God and you don't focus on the word of God. If you don't depend fully on the Holy Spirit, you can never be his. Because Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life. What am I saying this? Go with me to John chapter 6, John chapter 14. John 14 and verse 6. John chapter 14 and verse 6. John 14 verse 6. Yes, please. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So ladies and gentlemen, you can never make it to heaven except you rely on the word of God, you rely on the Holy Spirit, and you rely on the truth of God's word. Because that is the source of your power to enter into the kingdom of God. That is why John chapter 17 verse 17 in John chapter 17 and verse 17. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through, through thy tr truth. Thy word is truth. Ladies and gentlemen, we can obtain our holiness, our sanctification by the word of God. Because the word of God sanctifies us into the truth of God. That is what I said. That we must seek after the truth every day of our life. Because Jesus and the word of God and the Holy Spirit are the sources of our truth. In other words, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 27. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 27. 1 John chapter 2 verse 27. Yes, please. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. Mm. And ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. Ladies and gentlemen, the anointing, the Holy Ghost, the Allah's Comforter, when he comes upon our life, he obtain, we obtain the truth of God. He makes us truthful to his word. And then the Holy Ghost will teach us the things of God. And he will not lie unto us, but he will tell us the truth. So if you and I will rely, depend solely on the Holy Ghost, he will allow us to speak only the truth. It is only the true things that comes out from our life because we abide in him. You cannot abide in God without the presence of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So if we want to focus on the Lord, we must abide under the shadow of the Holy Spirit. Amen. No one wants to be deceived and live their life in a lie thinking that something true or false will change that through the, 
Anything that is false will change their life. Nobody wants to be deceived anymore. We have to come to a point where we make conscious decision that I shall never be deceived any longer. If you don't want any man to tell you any lie, and if you don't want to be deceived, then you must embrace the Holy Ghost. You must dive into the word of God, soak yourself under the covering of the blood and study the word of God for yourself so that the Lord can reveal his truth unto you. That is why when we read, we read 1 John, we read John chapter 1 and verse 14. John chapter 1 verse 14 and I think verse 17. He made us also to understand this. First John, John chapter 1 verse 14. John 1 14. Yes please. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So ladies and gentlemen, when we receive the word of God, the word of God becomes flesh upon us. The word of God becomes a covering over us. And then we can see the glory of God, the glory of the begotten of the Father, which is full of grace and truth. So our life is covered by grace and our life is covered in the truth. So ladies and gentlemen, you are, you become an embodiment of truth. There will never be found any lie in you. Because as soon as you try to tell a lie, the Holy Ghost will not give you rest. If you are a true child of God, you will always abide in the truth because your life is governed by the spirit of the living God. Let's look at what he said also in verse 17. Let's go to verse 17, please. John 1, 17. Yes, please. For the Lord was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. He taught us the truth of his word. In other words, he taught the truth of God's word. And we live a life that is revealed unto us in the likeness of Christ. We will live a life that is revealed unto us in the likeness of Christ. John chapter 8 and verse 40. John chapter 8 and verse 40. John 8, 40. Yes, please. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Whenever you speak the truth, ladies and gentlemen, don't worry. If you are a child of God, Many will not identify themselves with you. Many will not like you for speaking the truth. They will fight you and they want you to compromise like they are. But ladies and gentlemen, we are a different people. We are children of the Most High God. Therefore, he has granted us the ability to focus on him. We must focus on the Lord Jesus. Because it is only him that we have heard from. The Bible said we have heard from Christ. And as we have heard the same way he also spoke to Abraham. It is the same way that he also speak to you. That is why he made it clearer in John chapter 14 and verse 9. John chapter 14 and verse 9. Jesus made us to understand that if we continue in his word. John 14. John 14 verse 9. Yes please. 
Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me? Philip, he that has seen me has seen the Father. And how saith thou then, shew, shew us the Father? Hallelujah. He who has seen Christ has seen the Father. In other words, if you and I have seen the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit is therefore in us, then we have seen the Father. We are the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. If you continue in my word, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. In John chapter 8 and verse 31 to 32, he made us to understand this. I want us to understand tonight that many believers need to be set free from the powers of darkness. Many believers need to be set free from Satan and his own truth power. We need to be set free. Tonight, for you to understand the reason of your holiness, whereby you can focus on Jesus Christ, you must understand that Jesus wants our life to abide in the truth. We must focus on him. Second Timothy chapter 2 verses 24 to 26. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 24. Yes, please. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, mm. but be gentle unto all men, apt to, to teach, patient. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God pre adventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Who are taken captive by him at his will. Verse 26. I want us to understand here. That, that is why I said many believers need to be set free from the likes of Satan and untruth. We need to be set free because many are taken by the affairs of darkness. And because of that, the Bible said it may take the grace of God for them to recover. Whenever the enemy capitalizes on our life and when we begin to walk in the untruth, we begin to walk in the things of this flesh, it becomes a snare unto us. We need the grace of God to recover us. Because when you look at your surrounding, everything else depicts of the same issues. So you don't know that what you are doing, sometimes certain people don't even know that what they are doing is wrong. But tonight I pray that we will recover ourselves from the powers of the enemy so that we can focus on Christ. And he gave us inscriptive or narrative understanding and reasons why we should recover ourselves from the enemy. That is why verse 24 enumerated certain things that a man or a child of God or a servant of the Lord must not strive but must be gentle unto all men. And must have the ability to teach. Now here, up to teach. In the original English, well, uh, Hebrew context, 
It's talking about the ability to show the glory unto others. The ability to be an epistle unto others. And the rendering uh, Hebrew here also made us to understand that Hebrew version says that it must have the ability to teach and also have patience. You see, there are two types of teachers. A good teacher is a teacher that teaches and still have patience to take all questions. Certain people, a man, a teacher who teaches with patience is a teacher that has the passion for that ministry. It's the same way in the pastoral field. We have hirelings in the body of Christ and we have shepherds in the body of Christ. They are two same set professing to do the very thing but one has got a passion for the job because he is a shepherd a shepherd loves the flock eat with the flock act like the flock crawl like the flock so regardless of their faults their mistakes the shepherd still loves the flock regardless of what they will do, whatever they will say, the questions that they may ask. But when it comes to a hiling, a hiling is doing the work of a shepherd, but he is being paid. He has no passion for the job. He has no passion for the work because he is thinking about his pay. So he doesn't, he doesn't care what happens to the flock. As long as it is the end of the month that he will collect his salary. But a shepherd does not think about the end of the month. He's thinking about the progress of the flock. So there are two types of people. And the Lord will have us to understand that here he said my servant so have the ability to be able to teach and teach with patience so in other words if we want to be true children of god and to focus on the lord and his coming we must have patience in every area of our ministry Amen. patience plays a pivotal role a monumental foundation of our Christian walk. We need to understand this because if we don't, then we cannot be sanctified of the master. Now we are taking holiness into another phase whereby he said to us, we must focus on the Lord. That is also our reasonable service of holiness. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we can prove what is good, what is acceptable, and what is the perfect will of God? We need this. Remember, I told you from the onset that it can never be strong in our life until we do these three things by embracing Jesus, by embracing the word of God, and by embracing truth. And the Lord made us to understand by proving of his scriptures that when we do these things that we become his whereby we can focus on Christ which is our holiness why am I saying this go with me to Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 
Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Romans 12 verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, mm. but ye be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that is good and acceptable and perfect will of, the, of God. So we must prove what is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God for our life. Now this also brings us to another phase here where he said, in John chapter 8, verses 31, 32, 33 to 36. Please write this down. He said, as we continue in the word of God and of Jesus, we will come to know the truth. And the truth shall make us free from every lies of Satan and the powers of darkness. Now Jesus said, as he prayed to the Father, Jesus said, as he prayed to the Father, he used the word, thy word is truth. If we can focus on Jesus, then we must know that the word is truth. So there is no lie in the Holy Ghost. There is no lies in Jesus. And there is no lies in the word of God. That is why Jesus, when he prayed unto the Father, he said to him, thy word is truth. Amen. John chapter 17, 17. Then he went on to say, Satan is a liar. And he is also the father of all liars. Satan is a liar and is the father of all liars. And Jesus made us to understand this in John chapter 8 and verse 44. Now, on the third note, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil as he did it in the power of the Holy Ghost. He came to destroy the works of the devil. When you and I focus on him, he grants us the ability to destroy every work of the devil in our life. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8. 1 John 3, 8. 1 John 3, 8. 1 John 3, 8. Yes, please. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. So Jesus was manifested that he would destroy the works of the devil. In other words, if we will focus on the Lord Jesus, he grants us the ability to destroy every work of the devil. That is why Acts chapter 10 verse 38 makes it authentic. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Acts 10 38. Yes, please. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost mm. and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. God was with him. Ladies and gentlemen, we will go about doing the good things of the Lord when the Holy Ghost is with us. Amen. We need the presence of the Holy Ghost Amen. so that we can focus on the coming of Christ. Amen. Last week we ended where I said that we said for those who have this hope, they purify themselves. And I said this opens us into another realm of holiness which brought us into focusing on Jesus which is our sanctification and sanctification you know that it is also the same word for what holiness he is our sanctification 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and 11. 1 Corinthians 3:11. Yes, please. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So Jesus is our solid foundation. Because there is no other foundation that is laid except the foundation of Christ. In other words, whatever we yearn to do, whatever we want to undertake, whatever we want to do in life, our foundation must be the basis of God's word. Your foundation must be Christ. In your business, in your marriage, in every affairs of your life, your foundation must be rooted in Christ. Amen. We are complete in him and he is the head of all principalities and powers. The reason why he wants to be the foundation of everything that we do because we obtain completeness in him. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 10. Because he is the fullness. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 10. Colossians 2 verse 10. Yes, please. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So when we have Christ, we are complete in the Lord. When we focus on on Jesus who makes us holy because our righteousness is obtained from the Lord then we have authority over every principality and power if you are walking in righteousness and you are declaring the truth I don't fear any altars that will be raised from my father's house or mother's house. There is no power that can overshadow my glory because Christ has lifted me beyond every power of the enemy. Let's go back again to verse 9 and find something there. Go back with me to verse 9, please. Colossians 2, 9. Yes, please. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. For in him dwelleth the fullness, not partial. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand who you are. And what God will make of you if you are able to focus on Christ Jesus. Because he grants you. A divine authority that is the fullness of God headed body. It means every power of darkness is under your feet. Angels are sent to help you. If you focus on Jesus, he releases angels to help you. Are you with me? Let's look at something in Hebrews. Go with me. Let's find something in Hebrews chapter 1, I believe verse 14. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. Hebrews 1, 14. Yes. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to, for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Oh my God. You are heirs of his salvation. So therefore, if we walk in the righteousness of God, he sends angels to minister unto us. Amen. Do you remember where he said, I will cause my angels to carry you in their power? Ladies and gentlemen, we have so much authority that the earth cannot even contain us. So therefore God allows his angels to carry you. Who said witches and wizards can destroy you? Ignorance 
have allowed things to destroy us. But today, if you understand that if I focus on Jesus, he grants me the ability to become the head of salvation. And he will send his ministry spirit to undergate me. All I have to do, like the centurion said, I am not fit for you to come to my house. Only speak the word. Are you with me tonight? If you focus on Jesus, if you and I would depend solely on the Holy Ghost, we will only speak the word and there shall be a performance. Because the word that we speak from our mouth will not come back to us void. But the ministry spirit will accomplish that which we said. Because it is a purpose and it becomes an epitome of things that we have declared from our oratory. Somebody say, Lord have mercy on us. Angels cannot forgive our sins and they cannot make us holy. There are a lot of people that are ministering and worshiping angels. Tonight I want you to understand that you are above the angels. Can I repeat myself tonight? Somebody who ministers to you is not your Lord. So if anybody tells you that you got to worship this angel so so and so then please let them know that you are above angels. Angels are your servant. That is what God has made you. Because you are heir of salvation. And you yourself remember the Bible said the Lord has made you a saint. As he is, so shall you be. So though we live here on earth, but we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. This makes us to understand that by faith we receive Christ, who is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit and fire. Please write this down. Uh, Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. I believe everybody knows this scripture. And also through faith in the blood of Jesus we receive forgiveness of sins. Through faith in the blood of Jesus. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5. Then first John 1 7. Now, I want us to understand that when we have faith in Christ, faith leads us into certain dimension. Faith, I would like you to please, if you can write this down this evening. Through our identification with the death of Christ on the cross, faith grants us identification with the death of Jesus Christ on the cross and with his burial and resurrection. Faith grants set us free from the powers and the habit of sin and faith makes us holy. Faith set us free from the powers and the habit of sin and it makes us holy. That is why Romans chapter 6 and verse 6 Romans chapter 6 and verse 6 Romans 6, 6 Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him 
that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So therefore, our bodies have been crucified into sin. So we will no more do what? Serve sin. So we are not slaves to sin, but we are masters over sin. Verse 14, verse 14 speaks of a different thing. Romans 6, 14. Uh For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. So sin has no dominion over you. You are not under the law, but you are under grace. No powers of darkness has authority over you anymore. As long as you have received Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. You died with him, buried with him, and resurrected with him. So the Lord has taken over. Every curse of the law has been destroyed in your life. Verse 22 of the same Romans chapter 6. Romans 6, 22. Yes, please. But now be made free from sin and be, become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. You have what? The fruit unto what? Holiness. So in other words, you are the tree, you are the branch, and you bear the fruit of holiness. And you have everlasting life. Is somebody in the house of God? You will not die before your time because everlasting life is in your hands. If you will focus on Christ Jesus, He has made you holy. Amen. You have been made free. You have been made free from sin. I might have committed errors yesterday, but the blood is speaking for me. And as long as I go under the covering of the blood, the blood makes me holy. The blood speaks for me. Through faith we receive Jesus as our Savior, and he alone is our master. John chapter 4, John chapter 12, verse 47. John 12, 47. Yes, please. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He came to save us. The blood was shed for our salvation the blood was shed to deliver us now tonight we are talking about focusing on Jesus so that we will enter into his glory how do you focus on Jesus to enter into his glory number one through the blood of Jesus You focus on Jesus through the blood of Jesus. The blood is your covering. The blood is your your surety. The blood calls you to uh, uh, receive identification. The blood calls you to become a child of God. Number two, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the blood and you need the Holy Spirit. Number three, you need the name of Jesus Christ. You must carry the name of Jesus with you in every situation. Because as soon as you mention the name of Jesus... Any power in heaven and on earth and under the earth, any situation must bow unto thee. Number four, you need the truth 
of the word of God in your heart. You need the truth of the word of God in your heart. In other words, you must have the word of God written, inscribed, and engraved in your heart. David said, that word have I hid in my heart. That I will sing not against thee. Psalm 118 verse 11. You need to have the word written in your heart. Now I want us to understand that when you focus on Jesus. He also grants you the ability of cleansing. Ability of cleansing. Somebody will ask. Pastor, how can he cleanse me? How can Jesus cleanse me? He cleanses you in this way. He grants you redemption. You are cleansed by redemption. So in other words, when you are confused and you believe that nothing is happening to you anymore, Sometimes you come to the crossroad where you believe and act. The devil makes you believe that you have missed God. You have missed God's timing. This is what I'm talking about. The blood cleanses you. And when the blood is cleansing you, this is what it does. And this is what you must stand on. You've got to understand that as soon as the blood cleanses you, you have redemption. Number two, you have justification. Number three, you have righteousness. Number four, you have sanctification. Number five, you have God's mercy. Number six, you have God's power. Number seven, you have God's authority. And number eight, you have God's truth. Let me go over again. You have justification. Or you have redemption. Then you have justification. You have righteousness. You have sanctification. You have God's mercy. You have God's power. You have God's authority. And you have God's truth. So ladies and gentlemen, the minute you lifted your hands and you said, Lord Jesus, I have seen. Sanctify and cleanse me with your blood. You have obtained these eight principles. This eight virtue has automatically been released again to you. Are you with me? That is why we are focusing on Christ. The only way these things will happen for us is when we focus on Christ. Now he demands of us faith. All these things that I have numerated tonight is only by faith. So please in your note, please write this down for me. Only by faith. And underline that. I want to explain something tonight. Only by faith. I want to explain why I'm saying this. The reason why I'm saying only by faith is that number one. We can never receive the blessing of God's treasure. Without faith. We can never receive the blessings of all God treasures without faith. 
we cannot receive the blessing of all God's treasures without faith. So that is why I said only by faith. Are you with us? You want to receive the treasure of God. You only receive it by faith. Why am I saying this? Let me go straight and give you scriptures why I said this. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5. Yes, please. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins, in his own blood. In his own blood. He washed us. So we have obtained the heavenly treasure. It also brings us to Romans chapter 5 and verse 9. Romans chapter 5 and verse 9. Romans 5, 9. Yes, please. Much more than being now justified by his blood we shall be saved from the wrath through him. My God. We are justified by the blood. And because of that, we have escaped the wrath of God. The second death, we have escaped it. Because of the blood, we have escaped hell. Oh my God. You didn't hear what he said. What the blood would do for us by faith. That is what said his treasures. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9 and 10. Philippians chapter 2, 9 and 10. Philippians 2, 9. Yes, please. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Mm that at the name of Jesus every knee sh should bow and of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Let's add verse 11. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. He has given us power. Somebody say I have the power. I would depend on the Lord. Tonight, I don't know what you have gone through. I don't know what is strong you are struggling for from and what you are struggling in your heart. But tonight, the favor of God will speak for you. Amen. He has delivered you. Amen. He has delivered you. Revelation chapter 19, verse 16. Revelation 19:16. Revelation 19.16 Yes, please. And he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is with us. Amen. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is with you. Amen. That is why Jeremiah could boldly say let them gather and conspire against me. Let them speak the word. Let them pronounce any curse over me. For it shall come to naught. For the Lord is with me. I am justified by the blood. If the Son of God makes me free, then I am set free indeed. I'm set free by the blood. I like David. Psalm 119 carries weight. Let's look at verse 11 and 9. Psalm 119 verse 9. Psalm 119 verse 9. Psalm 119 verse 9. Beth. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways? 
by taking heed thereto according to thy word. A young man will guide their life when you take heed to the word of God. The word of God will preserve your life. Then verse 11, he said something. Verse 11. Psalm 119, verse 11. Yes. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I will not sin against thee. Let's jump to verse 18. Verse 18. Psalm 119, verse 18. Open thou my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Open thou my eyes, that I will understand the mysteries that is in the scriptures. Open my eyes. Are you in verse 18? Let's look at verse 50. Verse 50, 5 0. Psalm 119, verse 50. This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word has quickened me. So when I go through affliction, it is the word of God that quickeneth me. Thy word. Thy word quickeneth me. That is the power of the Holy Ghost. That is the mystery of God. Then, let's look at something in 89. 89. 89. Psalm 119, verse 89. Lamed. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. In Forever, heaven. O Lord, thy word is settled. In heaven. Amen. Jesus. Thy word is settled for me. We're talking about faith. The third thing. The second thing. That you got to understand is that. Test everything. By the word of God. Now the problem we have. As believers. And I want to prove to you. By the word of God. That the Lord wants you to test everything. Test every man of God. Test everything according to scriptures. You are allowed to test people. Are you with me? Test everything by the word of God. In Acts chapter 17 and verse 11. Acts chapter 17 and verse 11. Acts 17, 11. Yes, please. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. I want you to understand that the fact that somebody has got any title, has got any name, and the fact that they say anything doesn't mean it is right. Your standard must be the word. The Bible said that they checked every word that was declared to them if it conformed scripture. So if any man of God says anything to you, that has no spiritual backing of, of the word of the living God, you have the ability to discard it. Throw it away. Not that because he is so so and so has said it, so that is something that God has said. It's just a man, but it is only the word of God that is truth. Are you with us? It is only the word of God that is true. Test every spirit. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 21. First Thessalonians 5 21. 
1 Thessalonians 5.21 Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Prove all things. Ladies and gentlemen, every word that will be spoken to you. Today, there are things that are happening in the body of Christ where, where we come from. Uh, people will say they are giving you a contrary direction. They are giving you directions. Ladies and gentlemen, you must prove that direction that that prophet whatsoever wants to give to you. Did Jesus perform it? Are you with me? From Genesis to Revelation, where did that direction appear? Don't be naive. Prove all things. Are you hearing me? The only time Jesus gives direction that go and sin no more and go and embrace the word of the living God. And he said to the people today, the scriptures is fulfilled in their eyes and in their heart. Your standard is the word of God. If you live right and you pray, he will hear you. If they give you direction, that's, can you find a bearing in the scriptures? If one person did it, or the Lord gave any prophet a direction in that scripture, then you can follow. But if you can't find any trace, a prophesied to you by the word of God, that that is a lie. No prophet can ever tell me. You see, Jesus said, there is no prophecy that will ever come into this earth that has not already been written in the Bible. There is no prophecy. So if any man or woman prophesy and it is not in the scripture, throw it away. It is a lie, fallacy. Forever and ever, thy word is settled. That word is settled. That word is settled. So test everything by the word of God. Are you with us? If it is not in the word, or it cannot be confirmed in the word of God, avoid it. If it cannot be confirmed, avoid it. Jesus said, your word is what? Truth. John 17, 17. Jesus said, your word is what? Truth. So it comes back to the word. Every prophecy must have the word base. If it is not from the word, it must be discarded. Are you with us? Another point. Search the scriptures daily to see all the things that you have heard and seen. Search the scriptures for yourself. If you come into contact with any prophet who tells you go and chew grass, you ask the Lord that from Genesis to Revelation, where did God say to human beings, chew grass? Even medical science does not allow it. Because the enzymes in your human system cannot digest grass. Naivety. Because we don't study. We allow anybody to tell us anything. I was watching some clips and I nearly wept when the man of God was just washing his hands, his feet, pour water and people just start, what, what is this Lord? Have mercy on our ignorance. Did Jesus do that? 
Did Jesus do that? Where is it found in the word of God? Where is it? Where is it? Because we don't search scriptures. Let us please. Even if it is me that is teaching you anything, search the scriptures for yourself. Search the word of God for yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot grow if you don't search. The Holy Ghost will not grow in you if you don't search the scriptures. Which are appearing in the body of Christ. And according to the word of God, we must search. And so that we can live right. Go with me to Acts chapter 17 and verse 11. Acts chapter 17 verse 11. We are focusing of Jesus. Acts 17, 11. Yes, please. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So please, let, have, ha, let us have what? Readiness of mind. I please, I beg of you, Search the scriptures. Read the scriptures for you. Spend some time a day. Please. Please, please. At least 30 minutes or one hour at most. Search the scriptures. So that you become noble. We are talking about focus on Jesus. The Jesus who said, this is my love. That ye live and walk in the truth. He wants you to walk in the truth because this is what he loves. And I pray that you will love to do so. In 3 John 3, 4, uh, 3 to 4. And Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. In John chapter 14, verse 6. And then he said, focus on Jesus as the center of everything that you do. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 10. I pray that you and I will focus on him. We will focus on the word. We will depend solely on the word of God. And believe in what Christ says you are. That what man says you are. Are you with us? What Jesus says you are, that is what you surely are. I am what the master says I am. I pray that tonight we will focus on Christ, who is the head of all things. In him dwells the fullness of the Godhead body. I pray in the name of Jesus that tonight may you go in the strength of the Lord and in the power of his might. May the Lord strengthen you in every facet of your life. May God reveal his mysteries unto you by his word and by his spirit. May the Holy Ghost lead and direct you in everything that you do. In Jesus' name, go knowing that you are more than a conqueror. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen.